the MF Food Shop. Today I'm going to do a shop tour. It's been a couple years since I've done a shop tour and a lot of things has changed in the last couple years. So I've made the shop pretty well balanced out I think. Um, I think there's still some reorganizations in the future but for the most part I'm going to try this setup and see how I like it. So let's get started. So we're going to start on the uh, right side of the garage as you're walking in. The garage itself is a one and a half car garage and I pretty much have 90% of it. The other 10% goes to the uh, furnace, the water softener, and the laundry area which I'll show you here in a little bit. So as you're walking into the garage, the garage door is directly right behind me. Um, to the right we got the drill press. This is a Harbor Freight drill press and it is a beast of a drill press. Um, I picked this up off Craigslist for $80 and a buddy of mine helped me bring it home and you know a few about a month later or so I built the drill press table and a couple uh, um, drill press table accessories. And I'll put a link to anything I mention that I already have a video on in the description below. And so this drill press has worked out really well for me. Um, it's kind of loud, but you know, it's a drill press and I don't use it every day, but when I do use it, it is a uh, godsend. So uh, for the money, this drill press has performed nicely. I added the depth stop on the drill press and that has worked out well for me as well. Um, there's a video on that, there's a video on the drill press table and accessories. Again the link will be in the description below. Now directly starting on the workbench I got my Rikon 8 inch bench slow, uh, low speed bench grinder. Um, mainly I use this to sharpen my uh, lathe tools and every now and then I'll grind something down with it but these are really not the wheels to grind something down with. Um, it's a waste of money if you're just going to grind a, uh, a screwdriver or something on this and um, chew up those wheels. These wheels are, are really meant to sharpen and um, so that's what I use that for. So above the main workbench um, I got pegboard. It's basically a 4 by 8 sheet of pegboard that I framed out with 2 by 4s and put a couple of supports through the middle. Now this pegboard has changed over the years. Um, it's actually getting kind of bare right now because I've uh, built a lot of drawers in the shop and some of that stuff went into, the, into those drawers. Uh, pretty much what's up here now, at least from here over, I use almost daily. Um, that's why it's kind of spread out a little bit and I want to add a few more measuring devices that I just haven't bought yet. So a lot of this stuff I just use daily and I keep it close to this corner right here. It's close to the table saw, it's close to the assembly table and it's easy to grab and I can just grab it and go. Um, I got a few things up here on the hanging on the uh, bottom of the 2x4, um, some Allen wrenches with some T-handles, and some spade bits. Um, I don't really use the spade bits too often, but I do use this quite a bit, the uh, fast cap KISS drill bit system. This has come in, in handy. Um, pretty much all the drill bits that I will ever use is in this kit and those are really good uh, drill bits and they haven't filled me yet so I really like those. So directly under the grinder I got this little open area that I've just been kind of throwing stuff in. Um, that box there has some scrap wood that I go to quite often and a hose reel that I haven't done anything with and some plastic tubs full of crap that I haven't done anything with. This cabinet here this is, uh, used to be the cabinet with red drawers in my shop. I didn't throw away the cabinet because the cabinet's built well and it has full extension slides and the drawers are built very strong. 
and I'll show you what's in these drawers here in a few minutes. Uh, but I replaced the red uh, drawer faces with plywood face and I think that looks a lot better. So over here in this uh, cabinet section, these are for my table saw sleds. Each one of these plywood shelves can be a table saw sled. This one right here is my cross cut sled and right now these are just empty ready to go to be sleds. And when I'm ready to build a sled I'll just pull a piece of plywood out make my sled and then I can be able to shove it in there and store all my table saw sleds in this section. I'll show you what's in this drawer here in a few minutes. So continuing right along underneath the workbench I got a spot for my air compressor. Uh, this air compressor works very well for what I do and most of the time all it is is a, a quick pin nail or staple or something like that or just uh, using the blow gun which I use that all the time for. And over here, I just got my normal tools I use quite often, you know, wrenches, screwdrivers, pliers, stuff like that. And in the bottom drawers, just stuff that I don't use that often. Um, I'll show you here in a minute, but just tools that I don't go to very often. So let's see what's in the drawers. The top drawer is a very heavy drawer. It carries every socket that I own and every ratchet and extension and universal joint anything to do with sockets and ratchets it is in this drawer all the way from quarter inch sockets standard metric to 3 8 standard and metric and even some half inch uh, standard and metric um, I really like these little holders because they're quick and easy to find what socket you're looking for and the rest of the drawer is just uh, everything else to do with ratchets. And the next drawer is basically every screw and nail uh, that I carry. Um, I really like this cabinet for this because uh, it fits these boxes quite well. And I just rip off the top of the box and I shove the box into the drawer. And for the most part, I stay right here in this left-hand corner. But I do have some weird screws and nails uh, all over this drawer. In the next drawer down, it's still more hardware, um, but it's more of your bigger hardware, uh, like half inch bolts and 5 eighths bolts in there. I uh, got a little bit of electrical uh, stuff here and uh, some uh, jig making stuff over here, uh, some car light bulbs, just miscellaneous hardware, I guess. And then the last drawer, is basically everything that I don't have a home for it <laughs> pretty much ends up in this drawer um, I got wheels in there I got electrical boxes I got drawer slides I got knee pads I got some wire a uh, little bit of everything in that drawer it's more or less my junk drawer so in this drawer I got um, kind of the stuff I go to quite often um, you know, tape measures, uh, marking devices. Um, I got a case of Forstner bits down here, uh, a caliper. And then um, the right side of this drawer, I got most of my camera equipment in here and it stays pretty protected in this Kaizen foam. Now this camera equipment is kind of the stuff that I don't use all the time, uh, such as uh, my very first camera that I used and then the second camera I got and then now I'm using a Canon DLSR um, so I don't use these too often but I will use this one for time lapse or uh, I'll use this one for time lapse and I'll use this one for uh, over at the lathe and then on this is just a, a card scraper holder which uh, those magnets are really tight so they're just held in there by magnets and this board also protects my cameras as well and it gives me a place to store my card holders or card scrapers now you can see how the cabinet for the table saw sleds work um, this is my cross cut sled that I use quite often and it just slides right in there and it gives me a place to store them and these other shelves are just loose right now and when I'm ready to build another sled 
I have the shelves ready to go. In the toolbox area, the first drawer is basically every wrench that I own and a small little divider tray, which nine times out of 10, it just gets thrown in over here. The second drawer is all my screwdrivers. And again, they just kind of get tossed in there. The third drawer is, uh, you know, pliers, miscellaneous pliers and vice grips. This is just miscellaneous stuff. I got a plane, some sharpeners, some drill bit accessories, uh, some odd size drill bits. And in the last drawer is basically everything to do with uh, electronic um, or electrical. Um, all my wire cutters, strippers, um, crimpers, anything to do with le electrical is pretty much in this drawer. All the way down at the bottom, uh, just some miscellaneous stuff, um, you know, like utility knives. Uh, some extra uh, bits for my drivers. And this one here is stuff I don't use very often. You know, cold chisels, uh, um, heavy heavy cutters, uh, snap ring pliers, uh, adjustable wrench, which I don't use very often at all. And down here at the bottom is just miscellaneous tools. You know, I got couple pipe wrenches that I don't use very often. I got uh, whatever the hell these are. I'm not sure what those are. Laminate uh, plier or cutters I think. Um, you know the uh, nail gun. One of those weird levels that you can mount to a post. Uh, some plumbing stuff in there and so on and so forth. Miscellaneous tools. So up here in this uh, left hand corner cabinet. I hardly ever go into this cabinet. Uh, about the only time I go into this cabinet is for uh, this pouch right here. And it's every owner's manual to every tool that I've ever bought. Um, well, I shouldn't say every tool, but every tool that's in my shop, here's all the owner's manuals. And I just basically stole a work order pouch from Pet Boys. And there's some uh, woodworking how-to books in there, uh, some DIY project books in there, and then up, up there at the top is seven years worth of Playboys. <laughs> um, a lot of those Playboys has never been opened, and uh, they're pretty much in mint condition as is. And there's also a couple collectible ones up there. Only for the articles, I swear. So directly underneath those two little cabinets, I got my planer cart and my drum sander cart. Now I used to have just the planer on this cart. And when I kind of reorganized my uh, shop, when I did the miter station wall, uh, this is what I came up with. So I got the, uh, the DeWalt, what model is this, 735 planer in here. And when I want to use it, I just wheel it out, hook the shop back up to it, and drop the, the uh, panels down and go to work. The Grizzly 12-inch drum sander. Um, this one actually works pretty well too. And again, if I want to use this, I just wheel the cart out, hook the dust collector up to it, and run the boards. Now, if I ever have to do any thick boards, I will have to remove either the planer or the sander to do so, or rotate the sander this way and uh, do it that way. But for the most part, up to about three inches worth of uh, thickness, I can leave it right here in this position and run the boards through right over the top of the planer. In this drawer, I used to have my sandpaper, but I don't have pretty much anything in here anymore. Uh, gloves, and that's about it. Underneath, I just got a bench top jointer. It's kind of tucked way back there in the back, and uh, I haven't used that in a really long time. And then on this back wall, what this panel is, um, you may remember the big cabinet that used to be right here on this back wall. 
I started a cabinet door with signatures and this is the bottom half of that door. I didn't want to, I got rid of that cabinet when I did the miter station wall and I didn't want to get rid of the signatures. So I cut the door in half basically and mounted it right here. That way I still got all my signatures and then if anybody wants to come to the shop and do a, a shop tour with me or just uh, you know come out and uh, play around in the shop one day, I'll just have them sign the board and add it to my collection. Now where the Meyer station wall is, it's on the back wall of the shop, uh, direct opposite of the garage door. So we're about halfway around the perimeter of, our, of my garage right now. And this is the biggest thing that's changed uh, here recently and the biggest thing that's changed since my last shop tour update uh, is the miter station wall. Now the miter station wall, right now I have uh, four drawers here. I will have four drawers here, at least three drawers, maybe four right here. Then I'll have four more and four more drawers. So this whole bottom bank will be drawers when I'm completely done with it. Um, I got my disc sander that I made on a slide out tray so I can actually just pull that out and use it right there in the, in the space. Of course I got the 12 inch uh, compound miter saw, uh, sliding compound miter saw. And then I got the rigid sander on a pull out tray. Again, I can pull this tray out, use the sander right where it's at and slide it back. And then just recently I added this little uh, one inch belt sander that I picked up at Harbor Freight for 40 bucks. And it's also on a slide out tray. Up here in the left cubby, I don't really have any use for that right now. Uh, right now I just got a glue gun. In this cubby here, I'm using that as a uh, my cordless tools and charging station. Up here, I don't really have a use for right now. Uh, just empty area. Right here is going to be uh, an entertainment, I guess you can call it. This thing here is for my iPad. And this is a monitor for a computer that's going to go into that bay eventually. All along the top is strictly going to be for strength. Uh, lumber storage and I need to find a home for this this is my router bits so if you've seen the video on the miter station wall uh, the final video uh, I added LEDs why I don't know it was just fun <laughs> but the LEDs are in all the upper cubbies and over here underneath the two little cabinets. So over here in the corner, this is a door going into my backyard. And in these double doors here is the utility closet. Um, furnace, water heater, water softener, and uh, the tank to hold the salt for the water softener. It's all in there. Um, not much to see in there other than that stuff. So. That's the only thing that's in, really in there. Uh, I walled this off uh, before, I think before YouTube, and I just wanted to try to keep the dust out of all that stuff as much as I could. So not really much changed on this. Uh, this is the um, this is the double doors where I was just standing, where the utility cabinets are or the utility stuff is, and. Uh, on the outside wall is just some, uh, you know, brooms and dustpans and my old logo. Remember that one? That was a long time ago. Um, and I put my levels right here because it's just wasted space that I could use. And I don't go to my levels very often and they hang quite nicely there. Now it's kind of hard to get a good camera angle of this area, but... Just a few weeks ago, I finished up this wall right here, and it's just a garage dividing wall. Uh, the wall does go from floor to ceiling at this point, and it's open right at this point. I'll get you a better shot of it here in a minute. And it's open and so the garage door can come up into that bay, and I can still open the garage door and use it as a garage if I want to. 
on my wife's side of the uh, wall is obviously the laundry area and in these cabinets is just her junk basically and um, I built those at the same time I built the other cabinets that you seen earlier. Now on the garage side of that wall is where I've put my clamps, most of my clamps. Uh, they're almost all over there except for about four of them that I use quite often just around the assembly area and at the table saw uh, to hold something down. But pretty much every clamp that I own is on that wall right now. And that's pretty much what that wall is going to be, um, is my clamps. I don't know if I'm going to put anything underneath or not. I haven't decided. And this door here goes directly into the house and uh, you open that door it's to the kitchen. So it is kind of hard to get the camera into this little area and at the end of the video I will walk around with the camera just to give you a uh, I guess a bird's eye view. Um, but this area is for my lathe. Um, this was one of the main reasons I built the dividing wall is to keep the lathe chips out of the laundry area. Um, I was just finding a lot of wood chips in the laundry and what was happening is we was actually running that stuff through the washer and uh, clogging stuff up and, and ruining the machines basically. So that was one of the main reasons I built that dividing wall. Now since the dividing wall is done um, and the lathe area is pretty well compact in here, um, it's just big enough for my Rikon lathe. Um, and pretty much everything I use for the lathe. All my tools are up here in a PVC tube that I've cut at a 45 degree angle and mounted at the wall. And I'll get you a close up on this here in a few minutes. Now that we went to the entire perimeter of the shop, uh, right here in the middle is basically where most of the action go, happens. Uh, of course, the workhorse of the shop is a table saw. This is just a Delta contractor table saw. Um, I would love to upgrade this in the near future. Uh, I don't foresee it happening anytime soon, but um, if the right time and money and finances and all that stuff come together, I will definitely take a, the opportunity to upgrade this saw. Um, I have moved the band saw right over here and the dust collector right next to it. Now the dust collector is something that I need to work on in this shop. I don't really have a good home for it. Um, it needs to stay mobile uh, because I hook it up to the miter station wall, I hook it up to the table saw, and I use it uh, around the shop for other things too, like my planer and my drum sander and stuff like that. So it needs to stay mobile and Right there is where I need it for the um, bandsaw and the table saw and the router that's in the uh, table saw over there. In the section where the router is, uh, I built Jay Bates's uh, router lift assembly and that works phenomenal. I will leave a link in the description below for plans for that lift and uh, take a look at that because that works really well. The bandsaw is a 16 inch jet bandsaw and right now that is a very good location for that. Uh, I can use the bandsaw and if it's a long piece it will just come over the outfeed table and it don't uh, obstruct anything that I'm working on. So right now that is a good place for that. So from the table saw right to the side of it is the assembly table that I built just a few weeks ago. And I got plans for the assembly table on my website. And I also got plans for the clamp rack and the Meyer station wall at my website. Since the video for the assembly table, I've added that drawer right there. And inside that drawer, I just keep uh, you know a couple small clamps some screws and some pins and pencils and stuff like that. So as you can see with that dividing wall, the garage door when it comes open it just goes right up into this cubby 
and I can still access, you know, the garage door can still go up and I can still use that wall for whatever I want. So I'm just going to do a walk around from left to right. Um, my lathe area. Get you a close up in here. That's how I store my lathe tools. It works pretty well. And this is just a block with a couple holes to put my, uh, you know, drive centers and uh, Jacob's chuck and, you know, stuff like that in there. I think I'm going to like this little section here. It's just a uh, open bay area that I've used and I'll store some stuff in there, you know, pin blanks and some finishes and stuff like that. So the outside of that divider wall with all my clamps on it, you can see that little section. You can see that little section right in there. That's where the garage door goes into. And on the other side is the laundry area. And this starts the wall for the utility. Now the uh, miter station wall, the back wall. And this would be the right side of the garage where the workbench is. Alright, so that pretty much concludes 2017 shop tour. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you've noticed the difference in the last couple of years up to this point. And it's taken a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of um, efforts on my part to get to this point. And I really feel that I'm to the point where I want to 
up my game in woodworking. So I don't know really what that means, but I do know I want to take that next step in woodworking. And uh, I hope you notice that as well. And I hope I protrude that or portray that in my videos. So that's all I got for you today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like, share, and subscribe button. And hit that bell down, down below as well. That way you can get notified for any of my future videos. Until next time, I'll see you later.